Pushu has the dog, the Buddha nature. Joshu replied, Moon. Moon stands for nothing. Everything about the dog and the Buddha is different. As long as you compare a thing about the dog and the Buddha, you will only find differences. As long as the dog is something or anything, as long as the Buddha is seen as something or anything, all you will see is differences. The dog and the Buddha are alike only in their nothingness. Has dog the Buddha nature? Yes, of course. The dog is Buddha when the dog is nothing. Of course the dog has Buddha nature, but not as long as it is a dog. As long as it is a dog, it is just a dog. The dog is a Buddha when it has lost its doghood. You are a Buddha when you have lost your personhood. The Buddha is nothing but the one who has lost himself. That great emptiness, that great nothingness is the Buddha. Has dog Buddha nature? Moon. Do I have Buddha nature? Moon. Do you have Buddha nature? Moon. As long as I am myself, as long as I am what I appear to be and what I think myself to be, of course there is no possibility of Buddha nature. For Buddha nature is that vast emptiness that we all are. That vast emptiness in which even we appears like an absurdity. For there is no diversity, no difference. So what to talk of? me and we. When you are not, then the Buddha is. Surely the Buddha is even when you are. But what to do if you believe yourself to be non-Buddha as long as you are? Hence you are the Buddha only when you are gone. Gate, gate, paragate, swaha. When you are gone, gone, totally gone and disappeared, that is Buddha. When the dog is gone, gone, totally gone and disappeared, that is Buddha. Do you now see what Jushu is saying? Yes, of course, the dog has Buddha nature, but not the dog. The dog and the Buddha are one, but not as long as the dog insists on being a dog. As long as you insist on being what you stand for, what you are attached to, what you are identified with, of course there is no possibility of Buddha nature. The Buddha nature will remain present but yet appear absent and that is the great Maya. You know what Maya is? That which prevents the present from being seen and that which makes you see that which is not. Hmm? These are the two things that Maya does. You start looking at yourself as someone who is not. 
and you start forgetting the one that you really are, that is mine. Hmm? Seen a little differently. Joshu also means that this question itself is a barrier against Buddhahood. So when the question is posed, Joshu presents a nothing to the question. Drop this question and there lies Buddhahood. As long as there is a question, there is a questioner. Who are we? The ones who are full of questions. When the questions are gone, we are gone and what remains is the Buddha. Drop this question. And that's what the Buddha also used to do. He would not entertain several questions that pertain directly to Buddha. His response would be, drop the question and you are home. The answer would keep you believing in the validity of the question. So I will not present any answer. Answer will reinforce your belief in the question. You are already distracted. Why should I confuse you even more? So I will not give you an answer. Hmm? Do you have Buddha nature? Move. Neither yes nor no. If you say yes, then you mean that you as you are, you as you think you are, have a Buddha nature. No, no way. The way we have built ourselves up, the way we have conceptualized ourselves, there is no possibility of Buddha nature. There is only the force of habit, conditioning, biology and evolution. All of them are something, none of them is nothing. All of them are space-time, none of them are beyond the mind. So saying yes would not be proper. When asked, do you have Buddha nature, saying yes would not be proper. This question is the same as saying are you Brahm? Are you Atman? Saying yes would not be proper. Asking, do you have Buddha nature is the same as asking, are you the Atman? Saying yes would not be proper. Saying no would also not be proper. If you don't have Buddha nature, if you are not the Atman, then you must be something other than the Atman, which means something other than the Atman exists. Which means there is multiplicity of truths because the Atman, the Buddha nature is the sole truth by saying that you exist and are yet not the Atman, you are saying something besides the Atman exists and thereby you are raising parallel gods parallel truths and if truths are parallel they are just false the truth by definition is the one that has no end no substitute no parallel so neither can you say yes nor can you say no all you can say is move this move is such a beautiful word Language does not normally have it. But spirituality stretches language. It forces language to do things which language normally cannot do. That's what saints do. That's what seers do. That's what Zen does. Mu is a classical example. Hmm? So that is the reason why you will find me admonishing you when you say Aham Brahmasmi 
I will say, what rubbish are you talking? Are you Brahm? And you will find me equally great when you say Naham Brahmasmi. I will say, if you are not Brahm, what else are you? And this will confuse you. You may feel yesterday he kept on saying, I am that. Today, when I am saying I am that, he is saying, Are you that? Look at your face. <laughs> because your yes is as dangerous as your no. no. The answer is no. no. You see now why yesterday I kept insisting, You are that, you are that, and today, when you want to dance, I am that. I say, Shut up. Do you see this? Saying anything regarding your Brahm nature or Buddha nature is a disgrace. So don't say anything. When you don't say anything, then you are there. But who says by saying anything you will be displaced from being there? But try saying and let's see what happens. That's the absurdity of Zen, that's the beauty of Zen, that's the truth of Zen. It's everywhere, but it's not in the beginning, not in the end, neither in the middle. Yet nothing apart from it exists. But go and find it, and all you get is crumbs. Nothing apart from it exists, but try finding it, you will fail. Could you find it? Saying yes is arrogance, saying no is blindness. So the answer is no. Hmm? Mu is the only befitting answer to all real questions, all real questions. Do you love me? If I say yes, I am accepting that you and I exist and if you and I exist then we are separate, there is a question of love. If I say no, then I am saying that I too exist and I have nothing for you. In either case I am damned. So the right answer is no. Hmm? Do you exist? Were you born? Would you die? Should I hit you hard? Yes. Continue. Yes. 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 <laughs> Zen does not hesitate. In? Are you getting it? Clear? Yeah.